Okay, we've defined the industry and specific segment and now identify the value chain in that industry. The last step is to look at the industry life cycle. In this summary, I'll cover a few key points to remember about this step. If you're in the introduction phase, there are unlikely to be many competitors, so therefore buyers don't have many choices of where to buy the product or service. Profit margins might be high, but could also be low because the industry needs to attract customers quickly. A company in this phase is looking for early adopters. Marketing and communicating the value proposition is critical, as customers may not know the product well. People often think of tech sub-industries when looking at the introductory phase, as so many new products and solutions are coming out every day. But of course, any new industry will start in this phase. Peer-to-peer -peer financial lending is here. Online education is perhaps still in the introductory, although with new entrants coming regularly and profitability increasing, it could be argued that it is now in the growth phase. The line between phases is not exact and is open to interpretation depending on timing, and revenue size and so on. Industries in the growth phase are often using a lot of cash to further develop their products and services and expand their businesses. Demand should still exceed supply and industry rivalry is not yet high. Substitute products may have emerged but have not established themselves yet and so the players in the industry are able to increase profitability. However, don't be fooled into thinking everyone is on a winner. The growth phase is where many companies do slip up and can get themselves into financial trouble. Because the focus is on the moment and meeting demand, longer term planning is often put aside. This means capital expenditure on infrastructure may not go ahead, training and development of staff is put off, and management of short and long term debt is not systematic. An event that shocks an industry like a broader economic downturn can quickly lead to many companies suddenly finding themselves unable to pay creditors. So be warned. The mature phase is where an industry has a lot of companies and is highly competitive. Prices are often reduced as companies jostle for market share and capital expenditure may not be as great. Again, in the mature phase, companies need to conduct strategic planning about what they will do when an industry enters decline. Perhaps that bit of advice camera film manufacturers like Kodak didn't take seriously when they failed to foresee or want to react to the introduction of digital cameras. In the mature phase and also the shakeout phase, customers are more liable to switch products or service providers. Customer loyalty becomes a key initiative for many organisations as they realise once they lose a customer, they may not be able to get them back. But it's also at this stage that we see companies within industries use frameworks like Blue Ocean Strategy to create new opportunities and sometimes even revolutionise the industry. A well-known example of this is the birth of Yellowtail Wines that took the American wine market by storm. As the word decline indicates, the industry is now becoming unprofitable. Companies will exit the industry, some will look to be acquired or acquire others, and some unfortunately will hang on until they enter administration. The decline phase doesn't necessarily spell the end of an industry. However, it is likely to rationalise to only a few players who accept moderate profitability at best. Sometimes there are ways an industry can climb out of decline due to product innovation or an external impact. Sometimes organisations come up with blue ocean strategies that enable them to create new markets and grow a new customer base. So to recap this first key concept, you want to carefully define the industry you're analysing. Is your definition broad or narrow, local or global? Does it cover less analysed influences like environmental sustainability? Next you can look at the value chain of the industry. You make it broad or you drill down into parts. Where do organisations sit in the chain and how do they provide value? Can they integrate forwards or backwards in the chain to increase profitability? Finally, an industry has a life cycle with a number of phases. An industry could be clearly in one phase or perhaps on the border of two. Industry life cycles are much longer than product life cycles and don't necessarily have a defined endpoint.